Hi, this is a video that is going to show you how to use Blackboard Collaborate. I'm starting here in my course and the Blackboard Collaborate feature is available in every course and every organization that is in Blackboard Learn. For instructors to find it, on the course menu, click on Course Tools on here on the left and then you will see a link for Blackboard Collaborate Ultra and click on that link. The first thing that you'll see when you click on that Blackboard Collaborate Ultra link is your sessions page. And here you'll see near the top is a default course room and every course has a course room that you can use and we'll talk about options for using the room later in this recording. First, I'll show you different options that are available on this sessions page. Up here on the upper left-hand corner is the sessions menu. When you click on that, you'll see the option to toggle between the sessions page, which we're currently on, and the recordings page. Right now, there are no recordings listed. But if you choose to record some of your sessions, they will appear here. Then you can click on the menu again and toggle back to your different sessions. As I mentioned earlier, there is a default course room right here near the top. You also have the option of creating different sessions should you need them. The first time you would click here on this Create Session button. After you've created your first session, another option is on the upper right hand corner. There's the circle with the plus sign to create additional sessions. Also, each course room or sessions that you create has a circle with the three dots, which shows you the course room options. By clicking on that, you'll see where you can get a guest link. And this guest link is persistent. It will not change for the course room. So then you could copy the link and then paste it in an email and send the link to, for instance, all the students in your class. Or even if you had a guest presenter, be it someone outside the university, you can send them that guest link and they can also access the course room or session that you have created. Another option to share the link for students to join is you could add it on your content page and add it as a web link on your content page. The next option when you click on the course room settings is the option to edit the settings for that room. We already talked about the guest link. The default role for people who join the room is participant, most likely students. So you can change it to other things, but you probably would want to leave it as participant. And then you have these other options to choose from to allow any recordings that you make to be downloaded, to allow participants or students to share their audio, share video, post chat messages, draw on the whiteboard and files, or to allow users to join the session using a telephone. So just by clicking the boxes you can turn these options off and on. And as we look at some of the features in the course room we'll talk more about these options. Those are the features on the session screen. Next, we're going to go into this default course room, and to enter the room, you'll click Join Room. The first time that you join a room in Blackboard Collaborate, you will be asked to set up your microphone and camera. This will only, you will only need to do this one time unless you clear your browser history or clear your cache on your browser. So to get started, just click yes.
and then it, you will be prompted to allow Blackboard Collaborate to use your camera and microphone. Click Allow. and then you'll be taken to an audio test. And here you can see if audio is working properly, you'll see the purple bar move. Then you can just click yes, it's working. If the audio would not be working properly, you could click no, I need help to be taken to some troubleshooting options. But in this case, it's working, so I'll click yes, it's working. And then you'll be taken to a video test. If you can see yourself, that means your video camera is working. And you can click, yes, it's working. And again, if you did not see your image here, then you would click, no, I need help. And you would be taken to a resource page. But in this case, I'll click, yes, it's working. And that takes you through the initial setup for audio and video, and also an audio and video check. Now that we're in the course room, I'm going to show you some options and how to navigate through different settings in the course room. So the upper left hand corner has the session menu and click on that and you'll see several options. The first option is if you do want to record the session, you would click start recording and you would see a message that the session is being recorded and then you'd also see a small image of a video camera with a red dot indicating the session is being recorded. When you want to stop recording, just click on the session menu again and click stop recording. If you're going to use audio and allow students to use audio, we recommend using the phone. It is more stable. There are fewer issues with computer settings, especially for students where you may not be able to troubleshoot and solve the problem. So using a phone is a much smoother option. Once you click on that button, you'll see a phone number and a unique PIN. Every person who enters a course room who wants to use their telephone for audio will each have their own PIN and I'll show you how students can access their phone number and PIN as well. Then you can just call in that number, enter the PIN when prompted, and then you can use your phone instead of your computer speakers or computer microphone. If you have to report an issue or get additional Blackboard Collaborate help or want to learn more about the new Collaborate interface, these three options are available. Keep in mind that these options are Blackboard generated options. So reporting an issue reports it to Blackboard, which of course they would appreciate it so they can improve Blackboard Collaborate. But if you do encounter problems that you want to report or need assistance in solving, you would make a request through the usual routes for any Blackboard issue. If you if it is an online course, then you would email blackboard support at cuw.edu. If it is a face to face course, then you would send an email to CELT support at cuw.edu. When the session has ended, then at the bottom there is a button to leave the session. And to hide this session menu, just click the X in the corner. Next, I want to show you at the bottom of the screen what some of these icons mean. The first icon showing a green check mark just means that you are showing as present in the course room. The next option is after doing the audio settings, if you want to use and um, turn your microphone on so others can hear you, then you would click share audio. If you are using your phone for audio, then you could use the mute feature on your phone. If you want to share a video, then you would click share video. Once you allow this option, you'll see in the lower left hand corner, that's 
the video that you are sharing with other users. The other users will see it on the big screen, in the middle of the screen. Last, there is the ability to raise hands, which is helpful for turn taking. You have this option, which you as the instructor may not need, but students also have this option so they can raise their hands so you can better monitor turn taking. The next thing I want to show you is on the lower right end of the screen. There is a purple or magenta tab here and that's the collaborate panel. So if you click on the double arrow, then you'll see several options. And you can navigate through these options at the bottom of the screen. The first option is the chat pane and you can type into the chat pane and the option, you have options to chat with everyone or chat with just moderators. And by the way, if you are recording your session, the chat pane is not recorded. The next option at the bottom of the screen is to click on the list of participants. I'm the only person in this course room, but if others were listed, you would see um, the list of participants and you could see the network connections. And then there's also this moderator controls that the instructor has where um, in this case, I could change my role to a captioner. If there were a list of others here, I could change, for instance, a guest speaker who may be joined as a guest or as our participant. I could give them the role of presenter or I could give them the role of moderator. The next option at the bottom of the screen is to share content. And there's different ways that the instructor can share content. The first one is to share a blank whiteboard. So you'll click on the option, and then you'll see a whiteboard appears. And there's different ways of adding content to the whiteboard. For instance, I could just use a pencil and write or draw freehand. And here I have different ink colors. I also, also have the ability of making different shapes. Maybe I have an, uh, others, maybe participants have made comments on the whiteboard and I wanted to circle one. I could also type text. So if I type on the T for a text box, then I would just put my cursor on the whiteboard and start typing and it would appear. I also have the option of erasing or clearing the whiteboard and it's not selective. Once you hit clear, it clears the entire board. Participants do not have this option, only the moderator does. So that is the whiteboard. Next, I could also share application. And what this means is I could share my screen. So anything on that I'm doing on my computer screen, the participants or students would also see. And just a reminder that before you share your application or share your computer screen, make sure you don't have any confidential information open. Otherwise, others will see that accidentally. So to share application, I'll click share application. And you'll see the first time that you want to share your desktop, you, have to, you may need to install an add-on. So I'll just click Add to Chrome. And I want to add this extension, so I'll click Add Extension. And now I am able to share my screen. So here, I'll close this, and again, click Share Application. And I could show my entire screen or just my browser, my the course room. I want to share my entire screen. So as soon as I hit Share, you'll see 
a browser window within a window within a window. And it might make you a little dizzy, but that means that you are sharing your screen. And you'll either want to minimize your internet browser or you'll want to enter, you'll want to open up a new browser screen immediately. And then you can begin sharing whatever it is you want to share, whatever application you want to share on your screen. So I'm going to hit share. And then you're going to see those screens. So I'm just going to open another browser window. And then I could, for instance, if I wanted to demonstrate how to go to the CUW library and perform a specific search, I may want to do that. Um, you'll see when we share files in Blackboard Collaborate, one of the files that you file types that you are not able to share is a Word document. So if I needed to show something in Microsoft Word, then I could minimize my browser and then open my Word document that I wanted to share with students. And then I can continue uh, with whatever I wanted them to see. I'm going to go back. the browser and then when I'm done sharing I can click stop sharing down here at the bottom of my screen or if I go back to my course room then there is a stop sharing circle and a square that also means stop sharing so I can click that to stop sharing so either way will work the last option for sharing is to share files within Blackboard Collaborate so if I click on Share Files, now I've previously uploaded some files to share with others in a Blackboard Collaborate room. The types of files you can share this way are PDFs, PowerPoints, or images. To add files, you can just click Add Files or drag images or PowerPoints or PDFs right to that box. I'm actually just going to click Add Files here and then it opens up a window for me to look for my files. I'm just going to add this image here. Click Open. And then it takes a couple of minutes and you'll see it's uploading. And now it's uploaded. Now I, they're uploaded and I am able to share them, but I haven't actually shared any of them with users in the course room yet. To share one of them, I'll just click on the file itself and then click at the bottom, it says Share Now. And because this, page, this PowerPoint has multiple pages, it gives me a menu of pages that I can click on the first one. And then you'll see that the slide appears in the main area, the main screen. One advantage of showing a PowerPoint in this way is on this screen, I could use my pencil and underline something or circle something. I could have a blank slide or some space on a slide and invite students to type in their comments if I wanted to um, brainstorm or just elicit some feedback. And then I can click on the other slides and click through as needed. But if I go back to that previous slide where I had some text, it does not save that writing or that text on that slide. Once you go to a new slide, then any added text is deleted. When I'm done sharing that file, then I can click this Stop Sharing up here on the right. And then I can go to my next image or my next file. Here I'm just going to click on this image, click Share Now and then you'll see that others can see it in the course room. Then I'll stop sharing that. There is an option for polling in Blackboard Collaborate. It is not very detailed. Um, there is no option for writing a question where you want to poll students. So you would need to have a slide or a document with the question typed and the possible answers typed. Or you would have to just verbalize it and, and voice your questions to the students. So the different polling options are just a simple yes, no. And once you choose the type of poll, the type of questions you want to ask, then you'll click start. 
once you're done polling the students, you can lock the poll so no more answers can be provided. And you can also show the number of responses to students. There's also an option for breakout groups in a Collaborate Room, and that will be covered on a different video. The last thing at the bottom of this Collaborate panel is your settings. So I'll click on My Settings. And then you'll see another option, another location where you can call in and use your phone for audio. And this is the same place that students will be able to see once they join a Collaborate Room what number to call and their unique PIN. You can check and adjust volume and microphone. Then you've got some notification setting options. And there are visual and audio notifications for several things, and you can turn those off and on as you like. And then there's session settings that you can adjust throughout the session if you like to allow participants to share audio, video, post chat messages, or draw on the whiteboard and files. And that's the Collaborate panel. To hide the panel, you'll just click on the X at the bottom of the screen. And that's it for the course room and the different features that it includes. I'm going to go back to my session page, and if you want to create a session, you'll just click Create Session, and then you'll name your session. So maybe you'll have online office hours every Wednesday for two hours. You can pick the start, date, and time that it will be, that the, the session will be open, and the end time, or you could leave it open continuously, because even if students ha have the link and join the room, if if you are not there as an instructor or a moderator, then there is no way for them to collaborate or do anything without you being there. You could allow early entry if you want or not. And you would want guest access because that would allow you to have this guest link that you can share with students. As I mentioned previously, you could email it to them or you could add it as a web link on your content pane for students. The advantage of always using the same course room is the guest link never changes. And then you have your session settings that we saw this when we were in the course room. Um, we access them from the collaborate panel and these are the same options that you can allow as you're setting up your session. And then you have your session here. Keep in mind that the course room that is available in all Blackboard courses and organizations and also any session that you create is always public and is available and accessible to students. For instance, if you were interested in setting up a one-on-one -on -one meeting with a student using Blackboard Collaborate, you could set it up in your course but other students could potentially enter the course room even if you have not sent them the guest link. And I'll show you where they could do that. And I'll show and I'll explain some options for reducing the potential of an uninvited student entering a course room. On the course menu near the top is a link called Tools. Students can access the course room and any sessions that you create by clicking on this Blackboard Collaborate Ultra link. If you had a private one-on-one -on -one session scheduled with a student, you could temporarily hide this link and then you can show it again after the meeting with your student has concluded. Another option is if you wanted to hold, for example, online office hours for any course that you teach and you wanted to have that on Wednesdays for two hours, for example, each and every week, is you could use your course room and share that guest link 
from your course of that course room to all of your students. You could email them or you could paste that guest link in all of your courses. And that's how your students could access one Blackboard Collaborate room for all of your courses. Another option that would reduce the need to show or hide this Blackboard Collaborate Ultra link, you could request that a test course or sample course be created for you, and you would be the only user in that course. And to do that, if you're an online instructor, you can send an email to blackboard support at cuw.edu and request that a test course or sample course be created for you. If you teach face-to-face -face courses, you can send an email to celtsupport at cuw.edu and request that a test course or sample course be created for you. That way, no users are in the course. You would have to share the guest link in order to in order for users to enter that course session. However, it also would allow these course sessions to not accidentally be accessed through this Blackboard Collaborate Ultra link because there would be no students in that course. And that concludes this session on Blackboard Collaborate Ultra. If you have any questions, please contact Blackboard Support at cuw.edu if you teach online courses, or if you teach face-to-face -face courses, contact CELT Support at cuw.edu.